Justice Neil Gorsuch went on Fox and Friends last week and received backlash from the left for repeating the GOP talking point, Merry Christmas, because according to the left, simply saying Merry Christmas is spreading a Republican narrative. So it cannot be tolerated, even though it's, you know, like a staple of American culture or whatever. So we will go over why the left seems to hate Christmas, all that fun stuff. Plus, it's my birthday, so that's pretty cool. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, commie. It's been a while. Seems like it's been a while since the last video. A lot of stuff has happened, not only in the news, but also with the channel, because YouTube actually deleted the last video that we posted about the white Trump supporter getting beat up, and I had to fight them to get that put back up. Um, and also, it's my birthday. It's kind of cool, I guess. Here I am, spending it with you, because this is just so much fun. And I've been getting a lot of messages and emailed the last few weeks asking about censorship on the channel, future plans for the channel, what to get me for my birthday, for Christmas, stuff like that. So I'm gonna address that all at once at the end of this video after we're done talking about this war on Christmas, as it's called. And even if you're not Christian, it's still important to be aware of this because your country was built by it. And most non-Christian or non-religious people that I've talked to understand this and they appreciate it, but I still have to say that because there's always the people who are gonna get upset about it. So uh, firstly, I'm not one of these war on Christmas guys, like in 2015 or 2016 when Starbucks put out the all red holiday cups and people thought it was a war on Christmas. That's not me, I'm not one of those people. But I will say that when you have a cultural narrative that says that you can't wish someone well, you can't even wish them a Merry Christmas, I would definitely consider that to be a symptom of what would be called a war on Christmas. So. You know, we'll explain why that's happening, what the motivations are. But first, I do want to clarify why we say Merry Christmas. The left thinks that when we say Merry Christmas to somebody, it's rude because we're either assuming that they're Christian, which just affirms the oppressive Western culture in which we live, or we're just saying it anyways to assert ourselves and make them feel unwelcome if they're not Christian. Neither of those are the case. But, you know, when you're on the left and your identity is largely predicated upon feeling victimized by everything, it's hard to kind of understand that the average person isn't going to share in your infatuation with that. So the reason that we say Merry Christmas is because we are conveying feelings of warmth and brotherhood to the people that we meet. Like, I'm wishing them well in the way that my culture does, in the way that my religion does, and I have only the purest intentions, the same way like when someone wishes me a happy Hanukkah. I'm not offended by that. I appreciate that because they are including me in their celebration. I take that as a compliment because they're wishing me the same feelings of warmth and camaraderie and brotherhood, but in a way that is known to them or in the way to which they're accustomed. And now, this is a good story. Um, I used to work with this guy named Dominique. He's probably like the nicest guy I've ever worked with. And he grew up in a pretty rough area. And so whenever I leave, I'd say like, all right, man, I'll see you later. And he would always say to me, okay, man, be safe. And I would think about that a lot because the area we used to work in was not a bad area. It was actually a really nice area. And so presumably the reason that he would say that to me is because the area he grew up in was not that great an area. So he's just trying to wish me well in the way that he was taught to do so. It's like, why would I be offended by that? You know, like the progressive response to that would be, are you saying that because you're assuming I live in a high crime area because I don't have the money to move out? Did you just assume my income, bro? Did you just assume my tax bracket? It's like, right. You know, the point is that whenever someone is trying to communicate feelings of positivity towards you, you should appreciate that. Otherwise, you're probably a jerk. But the reason that the left hates Christmas is because Christmas, Christianity, the belief that we are one nation under God, these are all pillars of our society and the left hates our society. It's like there's a reason that they're progressives and we are conservatives. They're trying to change almost everything about our society and we're trying to conserve it, though we've been pretty unsuccessful, frankly. But the values which our society was built upon are rooted in Christianity. And so in order for the left to succeed, they have to turn the culture away from Christianity and away from God. And I believe the saying is that you can take the man away from God, but you can never take God away from the man. And that's true because maybe... They're not worshiping God anymore, but they'll still put their faith into something, whether it's the state or whether it's these environmentalist movements that behave as religious groups behave. And this is why there's such a high correlation between atheism and authoritarian leftism. Because if atheism were simply a rejection of the idea of a God, you'd expect to see a normal distribution throughout the political spectrum of it. But that's not the case. It's highly correlated with authoritarian leftism. So it's really not that they don't worship a God. It's just that their God is the state. And again, this is just a tendency. Obviously, there are exceptions to this. I know that every time I say this, there's a lot of atheists who self-identify as conservatives. They get mad at me. So again, it's just a tendency from which we can draw conclusions. And that's why they have a problem with Christmas, because they have a problem with Christianity, fundamentally. They would never correct someone saying, Happy Hanukkah, by telling them, uh, you should say Happy Holidays. They would never correct someone saying, Happy Kwanzaa, 
by telling them to say happy holidays instead, even though Kwanzaa is a fake holiday. Um, and that's because true Christianity is the antithesis of leftism. It is the exact opposite. Because if you're a Christian, your understanding of truth is derived from God. You believe in objective truth and you believe in objective morality. The left does not believe in that. The left believes in whatever they want to believe in. They worship themselves, frankly. There's no true definition of marriage, no true definition of gender, no true definition of a man or of a woman. Everything is decided by how you feel and whatever you feel is your truth because there is no the truth, only your truth. Same thing with the value of human life. There's no objective standard of human life because, well, it's the woman's choice. That means that a woman can decide at any point during her pregnancy when to kill the child, which means that she can decide arbitrarily when that human's life has value. And we're not allowed to promote objective standards because her body, her choice. It's like, okay, but what about the fetus? That's what we're concerned about. It's like, do you need me to repeat my bumper sticker argument to you again? Ow. Christianity teaches us to be selfless. But leftism is built upon what can you do for me? How much of your money can you give to me? Because I don't like that you have more of it than I do. You have to call me a boy even though we both know that I'm a girl and if you don't, I'll get you fired because I'm entitled to you altering the truth to make me comfortable. I'm entitled to healthcare. I'm entitled to more money even though I'm not being more productive. All of these examples are just manifestations of entitlement that are not permitted by true Christianity. And you might think that that's a stretch, but it's really not. Because if Christianity teaches us to be selfless, but we feel entitled to things, then I'm going to perceive Christianity as an enemy because it's standing in the way of what I believe that I deserve. And so saying Merry Christmas is bad because it's religious. Secular Christmas celebration is okay since it's basically a worldwide thing, but it's been largely divorced from the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Maybe more extreme leftists don't even like that because it's a big display of capitalism at work, but as much as they hate capitalism, they can contend with that. What they can't contend with is the presence of God in society because it's that lack of presence which they've been able to achieve that enables their lifestyles, whether it be supporting abortion on demand, living in envy of those who have more, being so prideful that you believe that you should get to decide how other people's money and time is spent, being lustful and pursuing meaningless relationships just to gratify your impulsive pleasure seeking. And because they've been so successful at that, because they've been able to shift our culture and our values so much, because the meaning of Christmas has become so diluted, now they're going to try and crush the last part of Christmas that we have that isn't explicitly religious, which is just saying Merry Christmas. And if you can destroy the true meaning of Christmas because it celebrates a birth and not an abortion, you can destroy or rather continue to destroy the institution of Christianity, which is what's happened. You know, a lot of times I talk about this, talk about Christianity and people are like, oh, well, I have to attack it by citing the behavior of Christians and how they don't actually live in accordance with the Bible, etc. It's like, do you think I don't know that? Do you think that I don't have a problem with that? It's like just because Christians have become bad at being Christian doesn't mean that Christianity is bad. And hey, maybe you feel like they're getting away with something, but you don't have to worry about that because we got goal line defense up at the pearly gates, baby. Don't even worry about it. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. But anyways, you know, that's my take on that. But this works well at the end of the video because I'm assuming that the people who would care about this information are the people who watch um, until the end of the videos anyway. So basically YouTube deleted the second to last video that I posted in the middle of the night so that I wouldn't notice until I had already lost a lot of views on it. So I appealed it and they put it back up with an age restriction. But this was the first time that they did that. And this is on top of them demonetizing every video that I post. So I only get like 71 cents for every thousand views compared to the $4 or so that other YouTubers are getting. And the strategy behind that is basically the same strategy as a siege. Right, like they know that these videos take a long time to make. They know that people like me don't get a lot of breaks. Like, you know, here I am on my birthday doing this. And they know that people like me rely on this for income. And so they figured that if they can cut that income by saying, well, your content's not advertiser friendly, eventually what's going to happen, or so they think, is they're going to bleed us dry until we finally have to get a second job and spend less time making videos or even quit altogether. And that's just one more down. It's all the same strategy, whether it's deplatforming or demonetizing, and it's all with the same goal in mind. And so that's why everyone that's been like, hey man, you know, what's your PO box? I wanna send you a birthday present or send you a Christmas present. And I said, well, you know, I'm gonna make a video. I'll talk about that. If you really want that information, you know, send me an email. But the most important thing to me is this and what we're doing. So the best thing that you could do is help me do this because this is the most important thing. Without the support of you guys, I literally would not be able to do this because they demonetize everything I post. Now they're starting to delete videos and it's because they know that we're effective. That's the same reason I'm getting death threats now because I get dozens of emails and messages every week from people, a lot of them from liberals saying, hey, you know, you changed my mind on this and this, you know, you made me question certain things and you know, this is actually different than what my teacher told me, blah, blah, blah. And then conservatives saying that, you know, you inspired me to be more active, be more outspoken, stuff like that. That's what they don't want because they want to intimidate us into silence so they can just wipe us out. And so my job is to put my face out there and inspire other people to do the same thing because then we can take back the culture from the left because they're trying to convince America that we don't exist. So we have to show them that we do exist and we're just normal people, not these radical evil bigots like they portray us to be in the media. 
And I don't like to quote Reagan that much because I think it's cliche, but he's absolutely right when he said that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction because we always have to be fighting back because the second we don't, they win. So it puts us in a tough position, but it's like, yeah, that's where the nobility is. No one said that doing the right thing would be easy. That's why sacrifice is noble. And that's why I won't ever say, oh, come on, it's only $4. No, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. That is your time and that is your money that you're sacrificing. That's a huge deal. And I'm eternally and extremely grateful for that. That's why I put your guys' names up on the wall in the studio, the people that have memberships. That's why I try to shout you guys out in videos. That's why I'm writing you guys letters thanking you. And if you haven't gotten yours yet, I promise you that you will very soon. You know, I'm just putting this out there because we've got the new terms of service. They're demonetizing me. They're deleting videos now. I don't know how much worse it's going to get. So if you want to do something, and again, you really don't have to, but the best thing to do would be to go to heckoffcommy.com and just get a membership and you'll get exclusive content, you know, stuff that's not going to be on YouTube. You'll get live shows, all sorts of stuff. You can read the list because it's on the website. Um, and you can cancel at any time, but that's definitely the most important thing that you could do. But if you can't, even leaving a thumbs up on the videos, sharing them with your friends, all that stuff helps too. So, you know, that's my two cents. I appreciate you listening to that, even though it was kind of pessimistic, but I try to be transparent with you guys. And, you know, actually speaking of that, uh, I'll tell you what the plan is for the rest of the year. We're going to do a video basically analyzing how politics changed throughout the 2010s. And then we're going to have a heck off commie best of 2019 type thing. So that's going to do it for the rest of 2019. So again, thanks for sticking around. Um, I'm going to put myself in the TV now, actually. So, all right. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. I hope that it's everything that you hope it will be. And uh, may God bless you and your families. And may God bless America. And remember, it is all for the kids. Ka-chow.